Oh, the 80s cartoons. What was your favorite cartoon from the 80s? And if you're a Star Wars fan, then you know that there was a droids cartoon starring C-3PO and R2-D2. And today, we go over some interesting facts about that short-lived cartoon series, so let's go. We're gonna go over some facts about the Saturday morning cartoon line that was the droids, the adventures of C-3PO and R2-D2. Voltron, defender of the universe. During the 80s, toy manufacturers were now intensely involved in the production and marketing of the new cartoons and children's programming and even our food consumption during the 80s. And one of these shows to join this new cast of programming was The Droids, the adventures of R2-D2 and C-3PO. In the grand scheme of things, the cartoon series takes place in between the events of Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope and was produced by the Nelvana Company on behalf of Lucasfilm because at the time, Lucasfilm Animation was not properly set up to handle productions like this. Nelvana was also responsible for producing the Ewoks cartoon series. The series ran for one season with 13 half-hour episodes and a one-hour special in 1986 that served as a series finale. It was paired with the Ewoks cartoon series in a block called Ewoks and Droids Adventure Hour and premiered on September 7, 1985 on ABC. The opening theme music entitled In Trouble Again was produced by Stuart Copeland of The Police. The series starred Anthony Daniels reprising his role as C-3PO and an uncredited Ben Burtt as the voice of R2 with most of the sound effects being reused from the sound archives from Lucasfilm. The 13 episodes can really be broken up into three mini-stories of four to five episodes each story as the droids end up in the care of three different masters. The first four episodes, we find the droids have been abandoned by a mean master and they're found in the desert by two speed bikers, Thal Jobin and Jor Dusat and later they team up with a rebel spy named Kia Mall that's trying to stop the evil From gang who are not that threatening as far as the Empire would be. The leader of this gang goes by Tig, or Tiggy, and is a bit of a whiner. But we can clearly see that Thal and Jord were the inspiration for the biker gang portrayed in the Book of Boba Fett. In these first four episodes, we're introduced to a slew of new characters, including the evil Vlix, Demma, who's the mother of Kia, and we see a cameo by Boba Fett. The animation, even though rough in today's standards, I would have loved as a child. The characters and colors were bold, and although there's some awkward pacing and dialogue pauses, the eight-year-old in me would have loved this cartoon. The next five episodes, we find the droids with an unnamed android on another desert planet, only this time being rescued from an auction and bought by their new master, Jan Tosh. He brings them back to his uncle, the very Yosemite Sam-like, Pudge Gundarian. They find out that the android is actually a prince in disguise named Monjalupa. A crime lord named Kleb Zelik is also on the hunt for the prince. Kleb is harvesting Negron 14, which are used in the Empire's proton torpedoes. With the help of a character named Solig, who wants to rescue the prince, they all escape. Along with a freighter pilot named Jessica Mead, they go on an adventure to place Monjalupa back on his throne. We encounter more bad guys, one that goes by the name of Kaibo Ren. Yes, that's right, Kaibo Ren. IG-88 makes a cameo in this story as well. And by the end of episode 9, once again, we find R2 and 3PO masterless and on their own. And film director Joe Johnston, who got his start in special effects at ILM, co-wrote episode 9. And the next four episodes were the ones that I enjoyed the best. The stories were conceived by Ben Burt. On episode 10, we find the droids with their new master, galaxy merchant Mungo Baobab. This series of episodes finds the droids joining their master hunting for runestones. And after some encounters and adventures evading the Empire, we find that this series of episodes has the deepest and honestly the most satisfying character arcs in the whole first season. I won't give away too much of the plots in case you want to go check these out, and you have to at least check out the last four, and if you get a chance to, also watch the one hour special entitled The Great Heap with the story written by Ben Burt. And the one thing I will say about the droids cartoon and basically the entire series is that other than the last four episodes and the one hour special, the rest 
are really hard to watch and enjoy. The animation for the time, I think was great, but if I wasn't watching this to review it, I would have just preferred to watch the final four episodes and the series finale, and I would have been just fine just watching that. But putting my eight-year-old self into this review, he would have loved it. I mean, after all, it was a chance to revisit the world of Star Wars. There was a short-lived comic series that came out right after the series ended, but with the same premise as the cartoon. The fact that R2 and C-3PO went masterless until they found one, went on an adventure, and then were left to find another master, but at least the last three comics were interesting as they tell the story of A New Hope from the viewpoint of the droids. So if you get a chance to check those out, please do. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. That does support the channel. And please consider subscribing. And also hit that notification bell so you know when episodes go live. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time.